G'day friends, welcome to today's YouTube video. My name is James, welcome back to my channel. Welcome if you're new. Today I've got a really quick little tutorial uh, for Silhouette Studio. You could also do this on Photoshop, but I'm gonna show you on Silhouette. I think it's easier on Photoshop, but I don't wanna assume everyone has that. So um, even though having a Silhouette is also very specific. These are little photo sticker sheets that I made for my nephew, Elijah. And I mentioned them, sorry, I have such bad allergies. I mentioned them recently and I said I maybe do a tutorial but I I just don't want to put it together like one of those really clear cut tutorials. <laughs> I want it to be very confusing. Uh, no, I just don't have the time to edit anything fancy together like that. So I thought if I just turn the video on, it'll still be the same. I can kind of step you through the process on the screen. I'm going to do it straight into Silhouette Studio. So I've got my Silhouette Studio open here. I'm going to go to the page setup over here, go to registration marks, turn those on. And um, if you see me doing this with my nose, I'm just trying to stop myself from sneezing and sniffing. So <laughs> that's gonna happen. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna go down to inset and bring this down to 0 0.5. I, if I do 3.94, it always just registers wrong on my machine. So I always just take it to 0 0.5. That opens it up a little bit larger of a canvas for us to work on. I'm on a uh, Mac computer, so I'm gonna go to photos down here, and this is where I'm gonna pull my photos from. Anywhere you have your photos from, you can drag and drop straight into uh, Silhouette Studio, which is nice. I don't know how many I'm gonna fit on there, and I'm not doing any specific sizing per se, but these are some family photos from Southwest Rocks that I want for my journal, so I'm just gonna make that sheet for myself, and you can uh, obviously customize this to whoever you're going to gift this to if you're making a little gift set like I did for my nephew. I did all photos of him and his family and us together and just family photo stuff which I thought was really cute. Uh, it, it When you drag and drop, it is huge. Like you can see it's absolutely massive. So let's not try and <laughs> zoom that close in. You might have to find the little bounding box by just scrolling it over. Or once you're on it, uh, you can go up to these little W and H up here and you can just change the width to something like, I mean, six. And if you press enter, if this lo is locked, uh, that will lock the aspect ratio. So it'll automatically find how wide that, wide and height, the width and the height relative to each other. So it's a four by six photo there. If it's undone, you can make it custom. I'll show you that in a second too. Now I'm going to zoom out by pressing command minus, which I can't go any further than that. So <laughs> where is it? Yeah, there it is. All right, I'm gonna drag it onto my little thing there. I'm gonna go command plus to zoom back in. <coughs> Pardon me. I'm going to drag this just on the, sorry, I'm zooming in and out all the time on this thing. It's probably going to annoy you. Uh, I'm going to drag it onto my screen there. Now you don't want it too close to this registration mark up here. You definitely don't want it to really cross over it, I don't think. And, uh, or these ones on the edge. So this little, I'm going to point to the screen, this little mark here, I can go kind of into these boxes, these little checkered boxes, but not too much. If I click on it, you'll see the bounding box. I can resize it by using the corner ones. That'll keep it all locked, that ratio. If I use the side or the top, uh, sorry, I'm gonna press Command Z to undo that. If I use the side or the top, I don't, it's not locked. So use the corners to drag and dra uh, drag the size, and then Command Z if you uh, make a mistake, on a Mac anyway. Uh, but this is a 4x6. No, at this point I've shrunk it. You can see the new size up here says 4x3, which is fine. I actually kind of like a 3x4 photo size. I have a new big journal, so it doesn't really matter. I can do whatever size I want. But 4x3 works. I'm just going to clean it up and make it a specific 4x3. There you go. That's fine. It's automatic. And there. Now, I'm also going to put a cut line on this, but the cut line is going to go slightly inside the photo, so I don't have like a clean, full bleed photo. So you don't have to worry about getting too close to this red box. Just keep a little bit of a distance there. You should be fine. Now, I'm not going to do anything specific, like specific layout of photos for this. I'm just dragging and dropping where they fit. So I've got a vertical photo here, like a portrait photo. When I put that on there, these are my nephews. I'm just going to immediately go up to this size you can drag the corners, but it's just going to take so long because the photo goes so big. <laughs> Look at Nate's face. Um, width, I'm going to say width. Let's just start with four. Press return or enter, and uh, that'll resize it. Now, what I want to do is actually just shove it next to this photo here. 
You can see there's snapping. See those little blue lines will snap together. You kind of, if you want to give it to someone as like a little present, I think it's nice to make it neat. So just snap them to, uh, to where they fit. That usually is a nice way to go about it. <coughs> Pardon me. You can also try to um, line them up on the bottom if you want. I think that's nice to line it up top and bottom. I feel like there was a way to... No, I'm lying. <laughs> What's the height on this? The height, 3.18. So if I change this to 3.18, which it almost is, it'll give me the right height and width. There you go. See, that's why I like doing it in Photoshop because I can mess around with all of that a lot easier than on um, Silhouette. Like if I want to crop the top off a photo to make it fit better, it's easier to do that on Photoshop than it is to do it in here, but it still works. Now, if you want to drag everything together, see it's kind of, um, both these photos aren't really centered. Just grab your mouse and drag this selection tool over both of them. This little one up here will center it for you, center to page. Now, I don't really need it down there, so I'm just going to keep it in that center space and move it all the way up to the top. Now, I'm going to go slightly inside those boxes. Like I said, I can use some of that space. I just don't want to put it so close to these registration marks that it's going to confuse my silhouette. So I'm just going to keep it down here a little bit. Now, there is a bit of a trick here if you want to kind of quickly put your photos in. I'm going to select these again. I'm going to press Command C or Copy and then Command V and Paste. Can you see it's pasted the exact same photos down there again? I'm going to just put them underneath. You can see they kind of snap into there. I'm going to click off, <coughs> pardon me, go back to my photos. Now, if I have another portrait photo, I can pop that one straight into uh, this photo over here and it will just fill that space. Can you see if I drag it on top, it's just going to fill it. So that's a really kind of quick way, especially if you already have the kind of size of the photos that you want, you can just copy and paste them, then drag and drop over the top. It'll just replace whatever's inside that photo. Uh, so that we, that's a great way to get a couple of them done pretty quickly. I think what I do want is this one here. If you do, however, uh, replace one of the photos, so this is a portrait, uh, portrait box here, but this is a landscape photo, uh, it will crop it instantly. And I don't think you can choose that crop. So it does like an automatic job of it. Again, that's why I would use Photoshop for this if I was really specific about my photos. Today, these are pretty easy uh, standard. That is not what I want. I always click the wrong screens when I'm recording the screens. <laughs> I mean, I do that in real life too, so it's fine. It's, it's, re it's real. I'm going to put my... I mean, I kind of want Savannah in it there. She's so cute there. But I think I should put the... Oh, I've already got the boys in there. Yeah, I'll leave Savannah there. That's our niece, Savannah. And I still got some room down here. Now, these aren't going to be as big, uh, these photos down here, but I will just put whatever I can fit into there. Like maybe, I just love this one, even if it's um, kind of a repeat of the other one. Make the height maybe three inches. Let's see what happens. There you go. And I'm going to snap it to the bottom here take that corner edge, drag it until I feel like it's just going to fit inside that box. There you go. I think that's pretty good. And then I've got some more space over here for another photo. <coughs> Pardon me. Again, if you had like an awkward space and you wanted to kind of crop it in, just copy one of your other photos. I'm going to command C, command V, copy it. And now I'm going to drag and fill this extra space with that photo so that it hits right to the edge. And I can have a really neat set of photos all next to each other. Sometimes it snaps, sometimes it doesn't. That's why I just love technology. There you go. <laughs> now I need to fill this bottom right hand corner with a photo. What else have I got that's very landscape looking? I actually maybe want to try this rock one again with that crop even though it's, mm, no, I don't really like that. Do I want this one of Savannah with that one? Actually, I do like that. So let me replace this portrait one with Steve and I. There you go, now I've got all of the photos in there. I'm very, very happy with that. It is a lot of fiddling. Hopefully you've got all the photos and they just kind of work. If you're a whiz with Photoshop, do it in Photoshop. It's easier, I promise. <laughs> but I don't want to assume you have Photoshop. Um, I've also done a 
a kind of five-year Hobonichi photo strips tutorial where I do it in Photoshop. So if you're curious about the dragging and dropping and the resizing in Photoshop, go check out that tutorial. It'll explain that pretty quickly and some of my steps through that. But these are all uh, rectangles or sometimes square photos, so they do fit kind of neatly together in a grid. The next step is, oh, also in Photoshop you can edit the colors and everything. You can't really do that in Silhouette. But uh, it is a great kind of simple user face once you know what you're doing. User face, interface. I'm going to go to this rectangle feature over here, press the rectangle, and I'm going to zoom in because I want to get a really good look at this. This is our cut line. So I'm going to start up in the top left hand corner of the box and press my mouse and drag all the way to the bottom right hand corner of my box. I'm going to let it go. It doesn't need to be perfect because then I'm going to select this mouse over here, or you could just use the V button if you're on a Mac. And now I'm going to take these edges, I'm going to go each side. So I'm on the right hand side, see that black line? I want that black line to hit the edge of the photo because the red line is the cut line. I want it slightly inset so that I can get a nice full bleed on the cut. So see that black line? If it's up here, you're going to get some white space in your photo. If it's down here and the red is right on the edge, the registration might be a little off and it still might not be very clean. So just to be safe, pop that black line on the edge of your photo. And this one over here, just a little bit here, and a little bit adjusting down here. And click off that, and that already has a cut line on it, which I think is great. If you have another photo that's the same size, the best part about this, you can just press on that cut line, Command C, Command V, so copy and paste. Whoops, I pressed on the photo instead. <laughs> <laughs> Command C, Command V, there we go. And then we take the mouse and we drag it down below. And it should, see those bl that blue cross? It's snapping for us. So it's aligning it to the cut line that's directly above it, which is the same size photo, so it fits automatically. You may need to adjust a little bit, like see that little black line down there? Might want to adjust that a little bit. You can just copy and paste that again and drag it down to the bottom. Now it's not going to fit, but we are just resizing them. So you can just drag them in each corner instead of having to go and select that uh, rectangle tool again every single time. You can just drag over and over and over again. There we go. So that all fits. Notice how here though the red line is going to cut right across Lyji's head and right across Jaden's eyes and on the top of Nate's head. So this may be a time where I just slightly bump up that line a little bit and call it just, you know, blind luck if it works. Excuse me, I'm going to pop out of screen. <laughs> My allergies are getting me. Um, yeah, I would just slightly adjust that just in case. Again, copy, paste. Snap that over here. I'm going to move this one back down because I don't need it so close to the top again. My machine actually slightly registers everything off in the bottom right hand corner of all my sheets. I don't know why it does it, so sometimes I try to overcompensate a little bit by having the cut line just slightly shifted to the left, but today I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to show you how it all works. So there's that one. I really just like the copy and paste method. It eliminates having... sorry. Command Z. Every time you make a mistake, just Command or Control Z, just to undo it. Um, it just takes out so much of that extra fussing double handling by trying to click all the tools. But it can be fiddly, and it can be a little tedious if you're not into computers like I'm not. Like, I really have to choose the day I want to do this. <laughs> um, but yeah, if you want to go even closer on a photo too, like say you've just had it all in here but you actually want the crop closer, you can just move the cut line in and that will be the new crop. Wherever you see that red line, that's how it's going to cut it out. So if I wanted that closer, I would do that, but I'm pretty happy with it like that. And again, those photos are the same size, so the cut line should be the same size and I can just snap it right above. Fits perfectly. Great, I'm going to zoom out my command minus sign. I've got all the cut lines here. Now I have to print it and send it to my silhouette. One of my tricks for printing, and I'm show it to you right now, is I'm gonna press print, file print. Uh, when I press this print here, you can print straight from silhouette, but it doesn't give you all the control that you might usually have over your uh, printing. Sometimes I like to adjust the colors or the paper type and stuff like that. Uh, this will kind of let me do that, but I don't know, sometimes printing it straight from 
silhouette ha like glitches sometimes for me and I get weird lines in it and sometimes weird striations. So down the bottom here, I go to open in preview and I actually print it from the preview. It creates a version of the file that kind of is on your computer. It's not in Silhouette anymore. So now this is just an untitled document on my computer. So this is just a US letter size sheet of paper. I'm gonna go File Print. And then I have all of my options to print again that I can use typically on my computer. Sometimes Silhouette will restrict how much you can customize the settings on your print, on your print job. So I only want one. US letter borderless because it has to be a hundred percent like you can't change the scale of this otherwise the registration will all be off so it has to print it a hundred percent but things like quality and media I'll make sure that it's set to glossy photo paper because that's what I'm using I'll print it to qu print quality high sometimes I'll even go down to the color options I don't usually change these anymore but uh, yeah stuff like that it's good to be able to adjust so I'm going to uh, set all of that up. I'll get some footage for you, print that, and show you what that looks like when we go to cut it. Okay, I have my silhouette portrait set up here. This one is matteless. I actually don't need a mat to cut this on, which I love about the portrait. And it's super tiny. Look, it's like just wider than the US letter size paper. I'm going to put that there. I'm going to feed it in by pressing this button. There we go. And now I have to go over to the computer and adjust the cut settings. So I'm going to go to send and that is going to send the information to my silhouette. I have it plugged in with the USB so I'm going to go to that one. I don't know why there's so many versions of it on my <laughs> computer. Those red lines there are everything that is going to cut in our file. So that all looks good to me. I don't know why that picture isn't popping up but we'll just live. And it is already set to sticker paper white which is great. That's what I want. Uh, auto cut, I'm happy with that. Auto blade, I'm happy with that. I have noticed that on this particular Koala brand of paper, the glossy photo paper I have, it's a little bit thicker. So I do have to uh, adjust the blade depth to four. And I actually bring the force down to 11 and the speed down to seven. It's just where I've found the sweet spot for this one. There's always a bit of trial and error when it comes to testing new papers and getting to know what's going to work and what doesn't. But when you're ready, you press send and I'll show you what happens next. So I've just hit send and it's going to register everything. Now, the thing you want to note with the silhouette portraits, any cutting machine in general, there needs to be a good amount of light hitting those sensors or the paper really so that the sensors can pick up where the registration marks are. Every troubleshooting problem I've ever had has been almost directly related to the sensor not being able to read the registration properly. So this is a pretty good amount of ambient light coming in from the windows. If it's nighttime, pop on some lights around your desk. Hopefully that'll help. Um, also, sometimes I use my phone flashlight and literally turn it like this and flash it onto the paper so that it'll read. But you just want to make sure there's a good light there. These are only rectangles that it's cutting, so it's going to be pretty quick. I'll show you it all finished in a second. Just going to press that down button to eject it. And here we go. If you are giving them to someone as a present, you might want to consider just trimming off the registration marks. You could also add some decorative border to the edge if you really wanted to make it a whole kind of uh, decorated sticker photo sheet if you felt like it. I like to just cut off those edge bits just so it looks a little bit more like a sticker sheet and less like something that just came out of my uh, printer. <laughs> I'm gonna need my bigger trimmer for this one. Obviously this one's just for show because I'm going to use these right away, but I just wanted to show you what it all looks like nice and neat. There we go. Even if you just had a little text up the top that was like James's sticker sheets or, or like James's memories or something, I don't know. If you were going to give it as a gift, I would probably try and personalize it a little bit. Uh, mine were just for Elijah. I knew he'd use them straight away, so it wasn't really a gift or anything, but uh, more so just so that he would have fun with his journaling because he loved all the little photo stickers I had when I took the uh, Sky Bambi Companion back earlier this year, kind of later last year. But because it's all adhesive uh, label paper, it just peels off and it is ready to stick down. There is no reason you need to fuss with scissors or glue. And I love that. And this has, I mean, this has really been game changer for me, honestly. The Silhouette Portrait has been probably one of the most valuable investments I've made 
uh, except for, you know, make like a laptop and like extra memory on my computer and hard drives and stuff like that. As far as, you know, a tool that really gets a lot of use and that I feel like has really paid for itself, definitely the Silhouette Portrait 3, especially because it's so compact, it's so little, I can pop it on my desk and it doesn't take up a ton of space, I can pop it away really easily, it just is nice, it looks like it goes with everything because it's got that white glossy kind of Apple Mac look to it, it's nice and streamlined, and the best part is you don't need a mat for this one. I do have a mat just for trickier cutting projects, but it just feeds itself straight in and I think it's absolutely fabulous for that. So let me turn you around to me again to say goodbye. Yeah, that's it. Thank you again for joining me in this little tutorial. I hope you enjoyed that. I hope you do find some time to fiddle about on your computer and make some of those sticker sheets and uh, hopefully find good use for them. If not for yourself, maybe for someone else as a little gift or for nephews and grandchildren and whoever really. Um, I think they're really, really fun and I love them. So I'll see you around another time. Until then, bye.